On this channel, I talk about often lessons that I wish I would have known when I was a kid. Lessons about money, saving, investing, a range of different topics that I felt would allow me to have been more effective investing as a teenager rather than just figuring it out myself through mistakes and having to read books. So I know that a majority of the people who watch this channel are between 18 and 30 years old. And this is a little bit of an awkward stage of life because you're just not learning how to be an adult while you also could potentially be thinking about raising kids of your own. I personally am 25 years old. I have a three year old son, but I have a few friends who are older than me and don't have kids and friends who are younger than me that have more kids than I do. And if you are in the camp where you are a young person who has kids or plan on having kids in the future, then I'm going to give you four lessons to teach your kids about money. The first of those lessons is definitely the most important when you're talking to children and it doesn't have to be too complicated. And that is that money is earned, not given. Teaching a child early on that just because all of their needs are met and they get a lot of things for free, that money isn't free, is going to be a fundamental building block for their mentality around money for the rest of their lives. I did not grow up in the wealthiest or even the most average of families by any means. So I personally sometimes struggle with not spoiling my son sometimes because I wish to give him the childhood that I never had. And by giving him a surplus of items early in his life like that, he may become used to extravagant spending later in life, even when he may not have the income to support that lifestyle. So some of the ways that I try to implement the lesson that money is earned, not given is to always attach some level of effort to any sort of money or a gift that he is given. He is only three years old, about to turn four years old now, so he really can't do a whole bunch of things. However, when he wants something like a new Paw Patrol toy or to buy more Robux or an in-app purchase, me and my wife tell him to do the usual chores that three to four years old can do, such as picking up toys, put them in the right places, maybe getting out his toy broom and sweeping up his area, but overall just trying to attach some level of effort to the thing that he wants so that it has some kind of scarcity value. If you sort of represent as a parent that money rains down whenever you ask for it, then ultimately that may be fine for you and your child throughout their childhood, but as they get older, they're going to be missing that fundamental lesson of that in order to get what you want, there's going to have to be some level of effort. And although this video isn't particularly directed at the parent savings habit, this can also help you as a parent save more money because you get more comfortable with the idea of telling your child no. And then once you teach this, the next thing that I think is the most effective to teach is to make saving a habit. No matter what, when you get some form of money, put a percentage of that money away. It doesn't really matter where you put it, but put it somewhere where you don't spend it. It could be in a piggy bank. It could be in a digital account, like a brokerage account, but overall teaching your children that whenever you get $10, put $1 away for whenever you really want a toy that you don't see today is mentally preparing them as all of the other habits for the future. Now, for those who actually do have kids, I bet that whenever your child gets any source of money, the wheels in their little minds immediately start turning to try to find a way to spend it. And more often than not, when they are presented with the opportunity to spend it on the spot, they end up deciding on something that you know personally that they don't really want. However, just by having the opportunity to spend money, they get so anxious that they need something new immediately. And this is something that many adults struggle with as well, as far as the impulsiveness to spend money or the temptation to spend money, even when you don't have a true need for that money. Now, as a child, they don't have any true needs as far as bills to pay, but allowing your child to save up their own money for whenever they do want something to buy later on will teach them the importance of a safety net, having a cushion, and overall just living within your means. And as a child, this simply means being happy with the things that you can afford. And honestly, my son is a little bit too young for a weekly allowance just yet, but we still try to use this next lesson in his life already, which is to create goals around his spending. And all of these lessons may sound simple, but when I personally was 17 years old, when I went into college, I had absolutely no discipline in all of these areas. I never had someone phrase it in the way that I always had to put effort in to make some money. And because of that, when I actually did start making money, I was still in a childlike mindset and doing all the things in that first year that a child would do if you gave them a large lump sum of money. My first week in college when I got a $1,000 monthly stipend from my college was immediately go to Best Buy and spend half of that money on a $500 PlayStation 4. Obviously, spending half of your monthly check within three days of having it is not a good habit to have. So what I'm saying is that as someone who felt like they were a fairly smart person when they went into college, still fell victim to some of these bad habits because I had no one to teach them to me. So as a parent, I definitely think that you should teach your child to create goals around their spending. Have them save up their money consistently to make a much larger purchase than they would be if they spent their money all at once. This could be for a $10 purchase or a $100 purchase, but having concrete savings goals now will shape their minds for when they do have to start saving up for big things like retirement, 401k contributions, and big purchases like buying a house or a new car. You don't want to have to learn how 
to save and save at the same time because that's when you're more likely not to be disciplined and make mistakes and set yourself further back financially. And then the last lesson is something not necessarily financial, but it is something that I feel that all parents either already do teach their children or definitely should teach their children. And it's just that to be happy with what you have. You have to know that at some point, there's always going to be a nicer car. There's always going to be a new Paw Patrol character. There's always going to be something new and flashy for businesses to try to take money out of your pocket. So I personally feel that emphasizing being happy with where you are and what you have is going to save them a lot of time and misery from comparison to other families, comparison to other kids, and just comparison in general. And then as they transition into adulthood, they will understand that every year, they're always going to come out with a new iPhone. There's always going to be a new model of a car that you just bought. There's always going to be new construction houses being built down the road. But instilling the idea that I already have a nice phone, I already have a car that works, I already have a beautiful roof over my head, is fundamentally going to help their mental health because they won't be chasing the rabbit all the time trying to get the newest, the newest, the newest, when the companies with millions and billions of dollars revenue are always going to be pushing out more and more and more because they want you to continue spinning your wheels. They want you to stay in a rat race working and working and working and never actually making any progress towards your own savings goals. As a saver, you are not very valuable to a business because they want your money in their hands and not in your bank account. But in this video quickly, I'm going to give you three things to do for your child to set them up in the best position financially going forward. The first thing that you should do is open up a custodial bank account or a custodial brokerage account and contribute 10 to $25 to that account every single month. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of money and it doesn't have to break the bank. But if you contribute $25 a month to that brokerage account, that is going to be $300 a year. And if you do that every year for 20 years, you'll be giving your child a $6,000 boost to start their life with by the time they are ready to leave the nest. Now you may think that $6,000 or 20 years is not a lot of money, but I know personally if I was given $6,000 or any amount of money really when I was first getting started out, as well as having a financial plan for that money, I probably would be a lot further on in my financial journey than I already am. The second thing that you should do is once they turn 18, is add them as authorized users to your credit cards. By adding them as authorized users, all of your payment history and credit history gets attached to them. So if you pay your bills on time, they could potentially start off their lives with 750 plus credit scores, which is phenomenal because one of the hardest things to get as a teenager or in your early 20s is the payment history and the credit history in order to raise your credit score. You could be paying your bills on time every month, but if you don't have a long credit history, your credit score probably would never get above 750. And then the last thing you should do is just set an example. Being a good saver and investor of your money yourself is more likely going to influence them on how they treat their money more than anything that you tell them. Your children will watch your actions and try to imitate you. So if you're telling them to stop swearing and you're still swearing, they're more likely going to still swear because they see you doing the same thing. However, if you found any kind of value in this video, then hit that subscribe button for your boy if you want to see more videos like this. And if you do decide to join the community, then I will see you in the next one, guys.